because this meeting has been uh, gathered in two modes, hybrid mode. It is uh, both online as well as offline. And uh, we have uh, one of our distinguished speakers in the sense he came as an uh, external examiner over here for one of our PhD students that uh, Viva Vasi or the external Viva Vasi has been completed. And after that, we have arranged uh, one guest lecture in cotton by Dr. Ramesh, who has been a TNU alumni or faculty man. And uh, it is for this uh, meeting, for this special lecture, we all have gathered here. And at the outset, respected uh, Dean SPGS, respected Director CPS Madam, and uh, staff uh, of my own department, entomology department, and uh, students from PG scholars, as well as PhD scholars across campuses of this uh, university. And uh, this circular has also been sent to the private colleges for uh, benefiting them. So PG and PhD students across colleges, all of you are most welcome for this uh, lecture that is going to happen today on uh, Carton. He'll be sharing his ideas on uh, different dimensions of uh, his PR as well as on the like what is there, the latest going on. It is through these lectures we come to know the, the we come to know of the recent developments. The very purpose of assembling you people PG and PhD is that you'll catch some idea when the lecture goes on as the lecture unfolds. It is for you people, nascent uh, uh, molecules that will have uh, free radicals, we used to say in chemistry, and that's how it is for you. You are going to catch the ideas, and that is the idea behind. And uh, with this, I hand over the. I welcome one and all for this uh, meeting. With this, I hand over the mic to Dr. Uh, Mutsami, deputy registrar, for uh, throwing a few more information about the speaker. Thank you. Respected Director, Center for Plant Protection Studies. Respected Dean. School of Postgraduate Studies, respected university officers, uh, deans of various uh, constituent colleges, principals of affiliated colleges, beloved professor and head Department of Agricultural Entomology, beloved PG coordinator, scientists across the state who are attending online, and my uh, today's speaker, uh, Dr. Ramesh, principal scientist. And my dear student friends, uh, good morning to all. I, I feel very happy uh, to say a few words about uh, today's uh, guest speaker. Uh, Dr. K. Ramesh, uh, Principal Scientist, uh, Agriculture Entomology, working in the um, CACR, Central Institute for Cotton Research, a recent station in Coimbatore. Um, so he did his uh, BSc Agri program in this campus uh, during 1996. And he did his MSc during 1999 on the main campus, Coimbatore. Then he completed his PhD in KAU uh, Trichur during uh, 2006. So he worked in uh, various uh, capacities as scientist, senior scientist. Now he is the principal scientist. He worked in uh, northeastern region uh, like Sikkim. Then he worked in uh, CACR in Nagpur. Then NBPGR. Uh, Hyderabad. Now he is working uh, as principal scientist in uh, Central Institute for Cotton Research uh, Research Station, Coimbatore. And to his credit, uh, uh, he, is, uh, he has handled so many projects, research projects. Uh, at institute's level, uh, he had uh, 12 projects and externally funded uh, four in numbers. And he has published over uh, 41 national papers and uh, seven international uh, papers. Apart from other uh, papers published in workshops, seminars, symposium, etc., and uh, I have a big list of awards received by our today's guest speaker. I will just mention a few of them: uh, Scientist Award of uh, Vasanraj David Foundation, then Professor Kamishwar Rao Award, Fellow of the Society of Plant Protection Sciences, Fellow of the Plant Protection Association of India, Fellow of the Entomology Society of India. Then WWF State Level Digital Photography Award, then Life Fellow of the International Consortium of Contemporary Biologists, Young Scientist Award, 
then i say senior research fellowship during 2016 tiginayu merit scholarship the national merit scholarship during 92 96 so many awards he has received uh, for his contributions and he also he is the member of so many societies more than 7 or 8 societies uh, he, he is the life member unlike uh, annual member he is a life member for more than 8 or 7 uh, societies so he is a very good uh, scientist known across the country so while uh, i was doing my uh, i was working here as uh, assistant professor he was doing his uh, msc then he went to kiu to complete his phd so we are uh, um, we are thankful to dr ramesh for uh, giving his accent uh, sent to to be here to deliver this uh, guest lecture so i join our professor and head in welcoming dr ramesh and now i request dr ramesh to make his presentation please ramesh please so thank you sir for the brief introduction Uh, respected director cpps uh, respected uh, dean uh, spgs uh, respected uh, deputy registrar uh, dr muthusamy sir he is my teacher also beloved professor and head department of entomology uh, respected university officers and other uh, distinguished uh, uh, faculties joined online as well as offline through video conferencing and uh, my dear student friends very good morning to all in fact it is a great privilege to visit our alma mater and i always cherish my association with department of entomology just like as a student like you i studied here in 90 almost 7 years i spent my life i learned the abcd of entomology from my stalwart teachers so i owe a special gratitude for the division always actually it's a pleasure visiting our uh, department uh, for me every every time i visit it's, uh, it's a temple of entomology for me so i am grateful to the wonderful teachers uh, of uh, mine uh, so they gave the foundation of entomology so i worked in so many places uh, starting from northeast central india middle india north india and of course four five years back i came to south india so i worked under various capacities in various icr institutes so so i i always found it was a privilege as a student of tna department of entomology it gave me a edge everywhere i visited so so with this background i will just go to today's lecture that is contemporary issues in cotton pest management and the priorities for tackling so of late we will be bombarded with online lectures you will be so bored to hear <laughs> the boring lectures you are attending through online so as far as possible i will be i will be trying to be very uh, short and uh, i will try to be more practical uh, so i know the difficulties because i am also undergoing so many online uh, classes so physically will be present or mind <laughs> will be somewhere offline <laughs> so i know the difficulty so just i would like to so cotton is a uh, very important commercial crop in india of course we know that and 32% of our uh, total foreign exchange comes out from the cotton industries actually almost 1 crore farmer are cultivating cotton in india and 6 crore people are employed in various cotton related industries uh, cotton ginning spinning weaving knitting and garment industry so for example in uh, the south india's manchester earlier it was coimbatore and now it is tirupur just a single place tirupur itself contributes almost 55000 crores of uh, income is generated in a single year in that almost 20000 crores uh, is being uh, for domestic uh, uh, consumption and 35000 crores of rupees per annum we are earning just from uh, the knitting industry of tirupur so that much employment cotton is generating and uh, we are uh, india is number one in area and production but 
in the productivity uh, we are uh, we have several lacuna almost our earlier productivity is uh, very low prior to 2000 our productivity was just 3 300 kgs that is just uh, uh, 3 quintals per hectare and thanks to introduction of two new breakthrough technologies in early 2000 one is bt cotton second is neonicotinoid insecticides so neonicotinoid insecticide and the seed treatment with evda collaborate that took care of sucking pest and the uh, bt uh, took care of trend the transgenic cotton took care of our uh, uh, boll worms so these two major limiting factors were uh, kept at abeyance in uh, early 2000 so our uh, production productivity increased just from uh, 300 kilo per hectare to it went up to 560 kilogram per hectare in uh, uh, 2013 14 and it could we could able to see the uh, uh, increase in area production and even adoption almost 94 percent of uh, cotton is uh, uh, being now uh, cultivated cotton is uh, transgenic cotton. So the technology, much adopted technology in the shortest period of time is BT cotton and a tremendous impact we could get. We could, uh, because of these two technologies, uh, our cotton uh, production area increased. We became number one in uh, world in terms of production, in uh, terms of area. But the, in terms of productivity, still we are uh, one fourth of the developing nation developed the nations in us and australia it was it is now 2000 kilo per hectare but we produce only 500 kg per hectare due to several limiting factors uh, and now off late the all the impact of the proven technology that is our uh, neonicotinoid insecticide and bt cotton started fading and starting in last five six years you could see that uh, the production productivity has come down again. Now it is only 425 kg. From 560 kg, now there is a setback of productivity due to several factors. Like uh, development of uh, resistance in pink bullworm. Our BT cotton uh, technology started fading away and we got uh, again uh, coming back of sucking pest earlier we had good very good chemistries but due to resistant uh, development sucking pests are again now re-emerged as a key limiting factor and we got uh, so many invasive pests and as well as uh, new pest minor pests are becoming major pests so these are the again the impact of uh, climate that elevated carbon dioxide and uh, change in temperature regime so these are the contemporary issues which caused tremendous uh, setback to cotton cultivation and just we'll briefly go through is it okay now my my purpose of uh, today's lecture is just to highlight the key points for uh, which are major limiting factor and what we are doing as a cacr and what uh, in uh, international research organizations are doing with for addressing these uh, key factors so number one key is uh, pink bullworm. So it is a, a wonderful technology. In 2002, we introduced uh, Bolgard 1 and subsequently we introduced Bolgard 2 in 2006, which uh, created a big impact. But after that, it uh, we started uh, uh, observing the setback. Even in 2010, we observed in uh, for uh, Bolgard 1, uh, the resistant development was observed. In uh, 2015, uh, we got... Uh, resistant to uh, Bolgard 2, but it was in isolated packets. After 2016 and 17, it uh, spread, uh, it, the problem spread to all over the India in the central zone, uh, comprised states comprising of Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, uh, and even South Zone, Tamil Nadu. And uh, off late in 2020, it moved to North Zone also. Punjab, Haryana states are also uh, being so. Now, entire India, the number one problem is development of uh, resistant to uh, uh, transgenic cotton and this we could see up to 90 percent earlier it was just zero percent bold damage now it is up to 90 percent of bold damage is observed in uh, states like telangana and the resistant ratio multifold resistance was uh, developed against this pink bold one And Cotton, CACR, CA Central Institute for Cotton Research is the nodal agency which coordinates the cotton-related research in India. And 
starting from 2017 through several means we started uh, working against this pest one of uh, the thing is because uh, pink bullworm is a hidden pest so we need to monitor and we need to tackle we need to even the farmers they forgot only old farmers those who cultivated cotton in before 2000 they know the actual damage symptom of pink bullworm now actually farmers will come to know the the current generation farmers will know the damage only during picking they will find that rab and there is some bold rod there is some black cotton so the, these issues the symptoms itself it was forgotten so starting from scratch again we have to educate farmers starting from uh, pest monitoring and again uh, identification of symptoms and uh, what we did the major mistake is while implementing the bt cotton uh to de- delay the development there is a refuge strategy was recommended along with the uh, bt garden we should grow at least 10% of non bt garden that our farmers never followed so that was the main reason selection process and so many uh, reasons uh, were there for the development of resistance and uh, now we started from scratch the cacr we uh, we started with monitoring monitoring uh, with the pheromone traps and uh, we started the demonstrating uh, mass trapping and mating disruption technologies in a country wide mode so we uh, initiated a network project uh, in collaboration with the tan state agriculture universities and 20 krishi vigyan kendras we adopted almost uh, 125 villages spanning around uh, 41 districts of the country almost all the key cotton producing district in the country was uh, mapped and we adopted ton farmers from each village so almost uh, 1550 acres and 1000 uh, 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 almost several farmers this project was uh, being implemented from 2017 including uh, uh, coimbatore so we each year we adopt 50 Uh, farmers in a district and uh, we educate the uh, farmers about uh, uh, the seriousness of pink bollworm we just uh, uh, we do pest recording we just do pest forewarning based on the trap catches we even distribute critical inputs when the pest level crosses etl we used to give uh, critical inputs including botanicals and biocontrol agents and chemical pesticide and we, we used to conduct periodical field demonstration kisan mela and uh, several campaigns were also conducted to educate the farmers uh, for the last 5 years and of course uh, these uh, we uh, due to the concentrated efforts we could able to see uh, that uh, uh, almost a reju- uh, reduction in uh, pesticide usage in irm we could able to see almost 40% reduction in terms of cost and uh, a 38% reduction in uh, pesticide use in terms of volume by sustaining the same yield levels so we could able to achieve these things in a country wide uh, mode and uh, just i would like to highlight the our activity in coimbatore district so it is a national wide as i told it was implemented in 41 districts including coimbatore district and we uh, cacr regional station at coimbatore we uh, initiated these activities under uh, Uh, different villages we adopted uh, five villages for each year in kenathagadu block the north polachi block and madukari block where the cotton area is more so each year we adopted 50 farmers five villages 50 farmers we just monitored from day one uh, we monitor starting from uh, strategies like uh, uh, refugia cotton and all the package from day one to harvest we make them to understand the uh, problem of pest not only pink bollworm even for uh, sucking pest also we just taught them what are the damage symptoms uh, so when they we monitor each week each village each farmer we will visit we have two uh, um, uh, two srfs for this purpose each week we will monitor whenever the pest incident crosses whether it be pink bollworm or uh, Uh, sucking pests we will we distributed critical inputs starting from pheromone trap in the initial uh, stage at this 30 days of crop we installed pheromone traps uh, at the initial period uh, we uh, distributed uh, neem oil and neem based formulations and later at the later point of time uh, we distributed chemical pesticide and the biocontrol agent of course uh, this chlorpyrifos was distributed 2 years back now we replaced it with amamectin benzoate because chlorpyrifos was banned 
then we uh, for sucking pest we gave uh, dinot furan flonicamide and other uh, uh, new chemistries for uh, sucking pest management and the at the fag end of the crop with synthetic pyrethroid like uh, lambda siluthrin and in between around uh, 90 days we uh, distributed uh, trichocards this is not only distribution even demonstration also we have undertaken along with pest monitoring and the periodical just we won't uh, leave alone the farmers with inputs just we gave uh, field demonstrations for each and every component starting from identification of pink bull of damage symptoms because as i told it is heat and pest the damage will be known only during picking so starting from uh, flowering we used to uh, teach the uh, identification of damage symptoms and the life stages of uh, pink bullworm and curtain and uh, weekly monitoring using pheromone trap and again we uh, uh, given uh, field demonstrations for safe handling of pesticide and uh, how to spray uh, a pesticide properly and again for bio uh, control agents like egg parasite how to uh, release in field so we have given field demonstration this activity was conducted in almost all 41 districts and uh, 1,220 villages, these activities were replicated. Apart from that, we uh, conducted several uh, field demonstrations, farmer field demonstration in each of the village. We uh, uh, invited our plant protection scientists and we have given uh, direct uh, uh, farmers field training in all the adopted villages. And not only that, we invited the farmers to our Central Institute for Cotton Research and uh, along with all the scientists uh, from crop production, protection, as well as uh, all the scientists for starting from agronomy to uh, plant pathologist, we gave advanced trainings to adopted uh, farmers in each village. Each year we conducted not only farmers, all the stakeholders of cotton, we gave uh, a sensitization uh, workshops to all the stakeholders starting from agro input dealers and uh, uh, ginning mill owners because the residual cotton carries the ping bowl on. So starting from uh, agro input dealers, farmers and uh, ginning mill, spending mill owners, we, we invited them. We uh, gave uh, uh, awareness and sensitization workshop regarding the uh, big menace of ping bowl on. And not only that, thanks to this video conferencing technology, we started bothering people across Tamil Nadu, like you. So, we uh, not we initially we started only with uh, Coimbatore district. Due to this video conferencing, we caught hold of all the state department officials in all cotton growing districts. So for last two years, we are doing this. All the agriculture officers, assistant agriculture officers of cotton major cotton growing districts of Tamil Nadu. We uh, conducted awareness campaigns for them, and not only that, we not uh, we have not left KVKs of Tamil Nadu. Also, all the KVKs with their progressive farmers, we are giving online training. So this much extensive work has been done for the ping bolwa, and you can replicate, not replicate, you can multiply the effort into 41 times of all the throughout the country. These uh, Concentrated efforts were uh, being undertaken with uh, uh, by our institute, Central Institute for Cotton Research, to educate the farmers and other stakeholders of cotton to tackle this menace. And uh, uh, we are distributing folders. We published pamphlets and uh, through posters also, posters, banners. We are educating the farmers. And not only that, uh, we are uh, through other mass media uh, like uh, All India Radio. Uh, every year we are uh, uh, delivering lectures, uh, interactive sessions with farmers that is being recorded and telecasted every year. And the success stories also being uh, telecasted. And uh, mostly these are the uh, 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 farmers, they are giving uh, feedback from Kanathakadu, uh, Taluk of Koyamuthu district. So our activities are being covered in major uh, uh, news uh, papers also. So due to these concentrated efforts, we could able to see the reduction of pesticide. We could able to see uh, a reduction in uh, cost, 45% of cost was reduced in uh, pesticide application and almost 29, uh, that is 30% reduced pesticide while sustaining the yield. That was That is more important due to this concentrated effort and timely management of uh, uh, this pest we could able to see because cotton is a notorious crop where every week farmers will spray before 2000. After the introduction of BT cotton only, this 
cotton got less insecticide earlier days 40% of insecticide was used by single crop cotton alone religiously every week farmers will spray now because of these two technologies like i told uh, the uh, spray sprays have come down but again farmers started spraying more number of pesticide so through this uh, mass awareness campaign we could able to uh, reduce the uh, uh, volume of pesticide sprayed and the cost of also reduced while sustaining the yield so not only that we are doing uh, uh, our in house research also for best for better modeling we have uh, a very old pheromone trap technology just outdated technology we are uh, our uh, the dispensation system also very old just uh, it is being the pheromone trap which we are using is 30 40 old at, at least you can say 50 to 60 year old design we have not done much improvement so we started doing uh, research on uh devising a new types of traps not only uh, targeting olfactory stimuli even with visual stimuli just uh, combining light source as well as pheromone source to attract the insect by modifying different trap designs and dispersion dispensation technology just normally we use the rubber uh, dispensation for monitoring and mass trapping but uh, different kind of dispensers can be used for different purposes monitoring requires slow release mass trapping requires mass trapping requires immediate release of pheromone compounds but we are using a single type of dispensation system that is rubber now so to adopt various applications of pheromone technology various types of dispensation uh, techniques to be tried so ccr uh, we are undertaking uh, research on improvising trap design as well as uh, pheromone release technology and uh, not only that uh, uh, with advent of iot technologies we are uh, working on artificial intelligence also just uh, uh, the trap will tell you it will ring you and tell you got 50 maths today so like that we started working on that almost uh, we have developed the ai based smart trap that will give you a message to your mobile so you, today you got 50 ping ball worm be alert like that uh, it is in the final stage of field defecation of course i am uh, doing this uh, work so this modern uh, tools also we are uh, 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 doing for uh, tackling this pest and uh, to tackle the pest again central government also we have we introducing new several new technologies in last two year we have uh, for mating disruption technology two uh, technologies have come one is pb rope and another is uh, splat splat system so this uh, got uh, approved by central insecticide board uh, registration committee uh, these are being now we are doing mass demonstration for uh, better adoption and uh, uh, much research has been done on uh, these two mating disruption technology we could able to go get uh, very good uh, results with respect to this mating disruption technology as well as uh, specialized pheromone lure application technology that is called splat so this technology just the same pheromone compound but different uh, formulations in this case th this is nothing just uh, a wax based pheromone paste is being applied in the terminal portion of uh, leaf junction and uh, it gives uh, of course but we in this cases we use uh, huge quantity of pheromone to confuse the male moths from mating so this two technologies uh, have been recently introduced and uh, proven successful uh, for controlling the ping ball worm and not only in india even uh, other countries are also facing the same problem of this uh, resistant development china is facing us is also facing a similar uh, uh, res resistant problem but they are religiously growing the refugia technology they are following the refugia technology china farmers they are indirectly growing because uh, china farmers uh, they are indirectly they are now the cotton hybrid all the bt gene is by f1 generation by hybrid those people illegally they grow f2 generation also that act as a natural refuge because naturally it contains uh, plants having bt gene and non bt gene so these chinese unknowingly they have grown because they use indian farmers every year we use bt seed it contains only f1 generation all the plants have bt gene but china farmers the what they did from f1 generation they have taken harvested f2 seed and illegally they have grown the f2 seed f2 seed contains both 
BT plants as well as non BT plant because of the segregation that naturally acted as a refugia for China farmers. So in China, the resistant development is very low. But in US, again, though they are using refugia technology, the problem of ping bolom was also there. But what they, they tackled? They tackled with the sterile insect technique along with the BT technology with sterile insect release. They could be able to successfully uh, control this uh, ping bolom. Uh, of course, in nice because their geographical uh, advantage, they have uh, isolated packets of cotton growing in Arizona and other districts. They it is isolated packets, so they could able to uh, control using sterile insect technology, which is not possible in India because a confined uh, place is uh, required for the success of the sterile insect technique. You might have studied in your graduate you, in UG courses about sterile insect, but that is being su successfully implemented by US for tackling the ping bollworm. And several other uh, uh, bio bi biotechnological tools are also being used, RNA-mediated uh, gene silencing and promoting RNA genes with uh, BT gene to counter the resistant development. And uh, uh, this, even in uh, our IHR, uh, ICR, Again, RNA-mediated silencing was attempted against Heligor Parmigera. So, effects, efforts are being undertaken with uh, modern technologies also, like uh, now genome editing with uh, CRISPR-Cas uh, technology. Now, uh, even in biorational approaches, like uh, uh, it interferes with the olfactory receptor, it is an indirect method of mating disruption. Instead of pheromone, the olfactory receptor of a male insect is being... Uh, altered with the genome editing and the male insect could not identify the female because they don't have olfactory receptor. So indirect mating disruption also it is being achieved through CRISPR-Cas technologies. So these efforts are uh, being attempted worldwide uh, in the in tackling the uh, ping bull or menace. So we are not left behind actually uh, Central Institute of Cotton Research has taken all the efforts to tackle the pest in a countrywide manner. And even uh, we are, uh, our regional station located at Coimbatore also, we are doing uh, uh, more concentrated efforts to tackle this pest. So the second issue is emergence of sucking pest. So early 2000 was a golden period where the new chemical imidacolabrid was introduced. So a C treatment was introduced almost for initial 40 days, no sucking pest. You could see the farmers were much happier. Initial 40, 50 days, they won't spray any pesticide because the seed treatment took care of all the sucking pests in early 2000. But again, because of indiscriminate use of pesticide and selection process, the sucking pest again, they are reappearing and it, it is becoming a big menace, especially the leaf upper in almost all cotton growing zones of uh, India, north zone, central zone and south zone. Now this is the key limiting factor after ping bolwa because of multifold development of resistance. So we are again targeting these pests with the different technologies, biorational approaches using yellow sticky trap with microbial volatile. So some microbial volatiles were found to be very good. Even uh, you can see almost uh, 20, 30 times more catch when compared to a plain yellow sticky trap. This microbial volatile targeted approach, we could be able to get much more attraction. There are specific volatiles for jacids, specific volatiles for thrips and white flies. So this work is uh, being patented. That's why that uh, much disclosure was not done. But this F, this work is being undertaken at uh, Nagpur and we uh, tested the efficacy at Coimbatore also. It is working very well uh, in tackling the pest. So I'm not going into details, finer details, because it will take a lot of time. And the second pest is thrips. Thrips was a minor pest earlier, but half late it is again, it is a big threat in uh, Central and South Zone, especially uh, Telangana, Andhra and Tamil Nadu. This uh, thrips has become a severe threat in last four or five years. Not only the damage, it uh, again transmitted disease called tobacco streak virus, TSV. TSV, it is now becoming a major uh, threat for uh, cotton cultivation in cotton uh, in uh, zones of Maharashtra, uh, Telangana, Andhra and uh, Tamil Nadu. So we are uh, uh, doing research on uh, these also. Now again, a specific transgenic was released against uh, thrips. It is not approved in India, but uh, it is commercially cultivated in uh, countries like USA. Modified BT crystal toxin cry, 
51A2 uh, gene was found to be effective against these thrips. So these uh, research work is being undertaken for tackling these thrips also. And again, white fly, it is a major threat to North Indian farmers. Punjab, Haryana, you could see this. If you, re if you read newspaper, you will see this year it was a big menace. 80 to 90 percent of the crop is being affected by uh, white fly. Not only uh, it uh, gives a direct uh, threat, it is indirectly uh, spreading a uh, disease called cotton leaf curl virus disease. So this is again emerging as a uh, threat to cotton cultivation in North Zone. So we are tackling uh, this pest with our microbial volatile as well as uh, entomopathogenic fungi, new entomopathogenic fungi. Isaria Javanica was isolated from uh, our, uh, there is a regional station at Sirsa, like Coimbatore, there is a regional station for North Zone. In Sirsa, this is the big problem and much of work against whitefly is being undertaken at Sirsa Center. So apart from these regular pests, we are getting threats from uh, new and uh, invasive insects for cotton cultivation. There is almost uh, everywhere you can see a changing pest scenario once in 10, 15 years, minor pests become major pest, major pest become, because when I was a student like you, Helicorpa armature was the dreaded pest. So all the efforts were for two insects, Spodopter later and Helicorpa armigera. But now these two pests have become very minor. So the changing pest scenario also, again, there is introduction of new invasive pest. In, co in coconut, you could see almost every year we are getting a new species of white fly. Even in cotton, we are getting new pest. So this is again emerging as a, a limiting factor for cotton cultivation. Uh, to quote the tea mosquito bug, which is a very uh, notorious pest in uh, plantation, tea plantation and uh, uh, garden, garden ecosystem, just uh, orchard garden, uh, orchard ecosystem, go and other crops, it was a major pest. But again, now it has become a threat to cotton also. You, could, you can see the, you can see the damage symptom. Initially, it started from Coimbatore. We observed in uh, areas adjacent to Polachi. Now we, we could able to see this pest has been, as uh, spread to uh, Perambulur districts like Perambulur, Madurai, Virudhunagar, Salem. So this for last two years, this is uh, becoming a major pest on our scientist at our uh, regional station. Uh, Dr. Amuda is uh, uh, studying the bionomics and other pest control measures. So we are not leaving this introduced pest also. We are undertaking uh, uh, research for to tackle this menace. And even uh, our uh, cotton department at uh, TNAU, they have reported the bonders nesting out fly. That is again a coconut, pest of coconut. Some uh, In some parts of uh, Tamil Nadu, Coimbatore, Salem, Erode and Palamuru district, in, in 2018, this uh, uh, pest spread and uh, this caused uh, serious concerns in uh, this thing. And again, TNAU is taking concentrated efforts to uh, deal with this introduced pest. And not only that, the much dreaded fall armyworm. Fall armyworm, you, 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 so you see that in 2018, in maize ecosystem, it created the big trouble. In, uh, fortunately, in cotton, it was not a so uh, dreaded pest, but again, it is now being adapted for cotton also. This, these images we took from Coimbatore, just to 200, 300 meters from here at our farm. In 2018, 19, we observed this pest is surviving in cotton. It, you can see the damage symptoms, just like cattle grazing. So first time we could able to see this much damage and square damage also it is causing. So that uh, fall army worm, any time it is a sleeping giant, it may also become a major threat to cotton cultivation anytime. We are again getting back Spodoptera litra. During last year, we could able to see Spodoptera litra occurrence in non bt cotton. Helicorpa armigera this year in non bt cotton, Helicorpa armigera is also reappearing. So we, as an entomologist, we should keep a constant vigil for anytime old pest can come back, new pest can become a major threat like this Falami worm. And fall armyworm, of course, not only in India, even in US also, this was found to be uh, damaging, even uh, BT cotton also. That BG1 was found to be uh, susceptible to fall armyworm. And uh, 
and of course for bolga 2 that is uh, that contains two toxin that is not uh, that is still resistant to these pests in india it was observed in maharashtra during 2019 even in bt cotton in ahmed nagar district maharashtra we could able to see the infestation of these pests and uh, in tamil nadu in 2021 we could able to see the pest fortunately it appeared only in non bt because we cultivate both bt cotton and non bt cotton for because breeding material all will be non bt we could able to see this pest is uh, infested in tamil nadu only in non bt cotton that too it is having a market preference for gossypium barbadens i think cotton you know that cotton contains four species India is the only country where all the four species uh, is being cultivated gazebimir sutum barbadens arboreum and another was which one is another one herbacea very good so all these four species is being cultivated in uh, india and luckily we found this infest only barbadens that is long linted extra els that is called els extra long linted cotton we could able to see the infestation and we are uh, monitoring this pest constantly now we are uh, vigilantly monitoring the appearance of this pest and again another uh, pest this was not reported anywhere that new pest during last summer we observed that arocatus sericans that was a ligate bug not reported a pest of cotton in worldwide but this we could able to see in coimbatore this pest uh, almost almost thousand num thousands of these pests were infesting our cotton here in coimbatore last year we observed so this pest any time it became it may become a major uh, uh, limiting factor so we could able to see in 100 in each leaf 20 to 30 adults are sucking the sap so we uh, we could able to send the specimen to nbar and we identified as it as arocatus sericans so cotton is uh, wonder craft for entomologist you will find new threats every year you have to you have to study the pest dynamics so we are tackling uh, all the uh, problems of cotton including monitoring of this new pest and again the impact of climate change so this is a much uh, debated study nowadays again it uh, in cotton also we could able to see the impact of climate change fortunately both in a positive way as well as in a negative way if you can tell what which is the positive aspect of climate change especially c3 plant like cotton we could able to see that elevated carbon dioxide is beneficial because elevated carbon dioxide it affects the nutritional quality of cotton plant so that naturally that insect feeding on the cotton plant we could see the increased uh, developmental period and uh, more activity of natural enemies because we have a closed uh, uh, elevated carbon dioxide chambers we are doing experiments on uh, elevated carbon dioxide we could be able to see that the pest infestation is less and the pest infested with elevated carbon dioxide that is more exposed to natural enemies so this is a benefit beneficial thing another beneficial thing is uh, heavy rainfall we could we are getting heavy rainfall that is creating much problem for us but these heavy rainfall also helping us heavy rainfall washes away our sucking pest like uh, aphids white flies and jacid so uh, due to heavy rainfall we are getting high relative humidity the high relative humidity also favors the biocontrol agents like entomopathogenic fungi so these are the beneficial effect of you can say <laughs> in climate change in with respect to cotton but there are negative effects also you could see extended dry periods because not only heavy rainfall we are getting extended dry period also in extended dry period pest like uh, thrips are becoming a issue not only due to uh, uh, there will be direct damage indirectly this is transmitting a virus which virus it is transmitting very good tsv it is transmitting tsv so it is giving direct as well as indirect effect due to this changing climate region uh, climate regime again temperature is also a major factor temperature uh, influences in different way because especially with sucking pest elevated temperature decreases the life cycle so the life cycle of the sucking pest like white fly thrips aphids and jacid is reduced so happily there will be multifold uh, uh, reproduction rate is higher and with due to shorter life span there will be multiple generations in a year so that infestation increases with rising temperature 
because sucking pest not only they cause direct damage they cause indirect damage also through transmission of viruses like tsv and cotton leaf kill virus so these are the negative effect of rising temperature with respect to sucking pest but rising temperature indirectly favors for lepidopter pest because lepidopter pests they are migrating they are migrating from the adapted area to non adapted area naturally climate changes high temperature they cannot survive in the regular area so they are migrated to they are being migrated to subtropical and temperate regions they are uh, the observation it is uh, migratory behavior is being noticed with respect to lepidopter species so we got, we are getting a mixed reaction for pest with respect to different uh, factors of climate change so this so far uh, we are we started initiated research with respect to elevated carbon dioxide and we are getting uh, positive results with uh, especially with respect to cotton so this is in brief about all this pest so what are the priorities what are the key elements we have to take care of what, what are the, our research priorities to be focused for tackling this pest just i would like to briefly highlight some of the elements like uh, window based approach and use of uh, selective insecticide strategies to delay the resistant development as well as to encourage the activity of natural enemies we should have window approach window approach that is 0 to 30 days 30 to 60 days 60 to 90 days which selected insecticide or which botanical can be used so that window approach to be specifically followed in cotton we can encourage we can reduce the number of pesticide spray spray we can increase the activity of uh, natural enemy uh, so these approaches to be concentrated effects to be taken care of okay, to be taken for uh, these window based approach and uh, again now the pheromone technology monitoring mass trapping and mating disruption if you do in isolated package that desired result will not be there so we have to go for area wide adoption for these bioregional approaches has to be taken in a much larger area than only like us because they could able to achieve the uh, uh, thing uh, with uh, in a wider area approach we have we can replicate the those success stories if you adopt these technologies in a area wide at least one village to be covered even if you go through that splat as well as pb road technology the cabrc uh, put forth on on condition it should be applied in minimum 10 acres of land you can't use it for one acre of land it should be the pb road should be used for minimum 10 hectares of land so we have to go for area wide approach with respect to this pheromone and again we have to formulate location specific insecticide resistant management as well as ipm strategies because we cannot follow a blanket ipm package for entire nation so we should formulate and we should refine the ipm and irm packages for each Uh, district or at least for each state we have to we should have a data on these uh, strategies and uh, we are using age old pheromone traps 50 60 year old design we are using so we have to improvise the trapping device and dispensation system for pheromones we should uh, develop new devices and uh, we should we should cash on ict and iot interventions so we cannot go if you area wide approach you cannot employ and uh, we will uh, we will install almost 500 600 pheromone traps manually is it possible to go to each trap and count weekly is it possible it is a very laborious process if you adopt a area wide approach pest monitoring is very difficult but now we have we have internet technology internet of things iot technologies are there so we should develop iot based uh, monitoring devices for uh, successful pest monitoring because uh, time of intervention is very crucial with respect to cotton so correct time we have to initiate the pest uh, applic- uh, pesticide application for that we should we should have a correct uh, time a correct monitoring area wide monitoring with latest technology and uh, even machine learning and artificial intelligence also can be utilized for uh, as i told directly it will come to your uh, it will mobile even if you sleep your mobile will ring and tell hey go to field and spray pesticide today you got more uh, ping bullworm in your field otherwise you held so that like that technologies are coming up so that is the need of the hour we should have such uh, 
machine learning and AI based technology to be developed. And uh, we should develop new chemistries uh, because the neonicotinoid, once a wonder chemical, now it is losing its potential. So we should develop new chemistries for uh, seed dressing uh, instead of imidal collaborate. So again, uh, we have to go with uh, novel and selective pesticide with the new with low ecotoxicological profile to conserve the natural enemy and to have a, a desired effect to lessen the uh, resistant development. We should go for new chemistries and we should augment and boost biocontrol agents. These are really backbone of our IPM. So we should augment these biocontrol agents also. And apart, uh, apart from everything, we should have constant vigil and monitoring on the pest migration and uh, new or uh, invasive pest in cotton to be monitored. So these are the efforts uh, the Central Institute for Cotton Research is taking for uh, tackling uh, these uh, pests. So thank you very much for inviting me to deliver the lecture and I think it is little interesting for you because I could see only two or three people are only sleeping. Others are, <laughs> others are constantly monitoring. Hope this will be useful so you can as a as a student of this great entomology department, uh, it is a happy occasion for me to come here and to deliver the lecture for the current and future and future scientists of entomology. All the very best. I would like to thank my teachers and uh, uh, professor and the department of entomology, Dean uh, SPGS and uh, director CPPS for inviting me to be external examiner for today I had an interesting thesis by submitted by Dr. Badmashri. So officially she is Dr. Badmashri. I could she is a, she has done a wonderful uh, work on pink bollworm. So she analyzed the genetic diversity of pink bollworm in Tamil Nadu and she has done a wonderful work. And uh, I thank uh, I sincerely congratulate the advisory committee members and my teacher. Uh, Anna, respected uh, Deputy Registrar Sir, Muthusami Sir, for uh, guiding the student. And again, TNAU is also wonderful uh, research on tackling the cotton pest. So I thank everyone for uh, this opportunity, uh, for uh, being an external examiner for a PhD student, as well as for delivering this uh, lecture on contemporary issues of uh, cotton pest management. Thank you. Thank you, Anandal. And before we move on to the Thanksgiving, Five minutes discussion, sir. Yes, sir. Not only doubts, you can give feedback also. Yeah. So, how was the lecture? Have you got something, something little bit useful, some nanogram of useful material you got? So, you can share. You should speak out. Almost on behalf of them, I had been associated with cotton for six years. Yes. So, to me, you you divided the whole thing before 2000 and after 2000 and I was in that particular juncture. Okay. Slightly before 2000 and after 2000. Yes. So that was the time where, as you told, Helicoverpa Armijira used to speak more of. Pink bollworm was not a threat. So first we had to contain through the cry one ac It came in the form of BT and for information of the house, it's me, me and me at uh, cotton research station Siliptur, we got the BT cotton hybrids, some four numbers through Van Gopal Rao, the then director of CACR, and we did the evaluation part. And we ourselves didn't know about the importance. When I came for the subsequent uh, crop scientist meet cotton here, director and uh, the whole set of cotton scientists who were in the main campus as well, they were asking about that, how that BT cotton seed is, because nobody has seen that before. It was all there in the paper. How a BT cotton seed will behave? Because that was much huge and uh, amidst a great uh, opposition only we were, they were able to bring BT cotton into India. Now we have got a rich history that we have got some 200 BT cotton hybrids and all. But uh, it is initially through CACR, we did the first evaluation here. And incidentally, I was involved in the first evaluation of BT maize hybrids also. It came to Coimbatore at that time also. It's it is a coincidence, mm -hmm. and at that time BHC, the BT 162. I remember two numbers, 182 and 162. Another BT 12 BT or something like that. All 
micro hybrids one okra hybrid that was good and the, at that time at itself the sucking test were more in number and that is in short about the bt and your whole lecture an answer for uh, cotton pink bollworm at that point of time and now we have got some two pheromone uh, two pheromones for that and uh, one question to you sir now from me is that yes, sir. why are you always confusing the males <laughs> because a basic question these are in these. one of the splash technique also you are confused the bell and in one instance you are uh, uh, overloading that with the signals and again through bt that uh, biotechnology also you are trying to silence the olfactory sense it again is, males only it is easy to you are silence the male. work of males is difficult sir <laughs> It is easy it is to control. It is aligning some, somewhere to me. In a lighter way, I can say, sir. Lighter way only. Yeah, we, we need the answer, like. <laughs> males are easy to it manage. Is, it is easy to you manipulate can, the males or you what? Can, <laughs> you can keep the mouth closed. Male, male will keep quiet. Male will be quiet. Then. <laughs> well, that is easy to approve. Easy That's to. That's what. It is easy to manipulate the males. It is tough with the females, I believe. <laughs> so bioration all the unfortunately all the bioration approaches are targeting males only males only <laughs> so they are the basic culprits i believe in the cotton ecosystem and in one of your slides i saw that uh, one dreaded name cotton boll weevil yes sir boll weevil iot uh, iot or artificial intelligence we don't have no no we fortunately still we don't have that anthonomous right. grant is sir still, india is, it is highly free. fortunate yes yes we are free but other threats like phala ami bomb it is again we are that getting is, that's what i thought of telling earlier we had litura and instead of litura we are now frugiperda so the basic problems remain the same only the names have changed yes. it is repeating in succession earlier we used to say the sucking test as early season sucking test that early season has gone now sucking now test still is still on 20 days throughout the throughout season, the season, throughout the season. yes and uh, team must it to bug also you are uh, you are projected yes sir for last 2 3 years it is a it is a big threat in isolated pikes of course in initially it was only in coimbatore now it has spread to perambalur and south india also it is that's there. what sir actually the team must to bug already we don't have an answer in the other crops yes. especially neem and all yes when it comes to cotton i think we will get an answer sir yes, because sir. cotton is one crop yes. we will maximize and again all your ipm trials which we are following now in so many students this is elsewhere we have replicated only from cotton uh, biological based uh, ipm non ipm and farmers control will be comparing treatments the base is from cotton ipm only yes. growing uh, right from growing uh, taking up a moderately resistant variety and superimposing that with the other again your gene permitting yes. this is a model yes even for irm also cotton is cotton a model. model yes sir yes sir okay where is sandeep before we proceeding to the at least i need one feedback from students whether uh, whether i was my lecture was boring so boring or little boring Only slightly hello you can rate slightly. sir thanks for the delivering the lecture sir i have one thanks for boring lecture no sir delivering lecture <laughs> it's a wonderful lecture uh, about the current scenario of uh, cotton pest management also okay and i have one question for you uh, about the uh, microbial vivoc as the embedded with the vivoc in, uh, in the yellow sticky trap the microbial uh, i have question my question is the microbial vivoc the source of microbial vivoc and the component of the microbial vivoc will be same for microbial vivoc sir? yeah good good question but uh, the inventor is applying for patent is not revealing anything okay thank so you so once it is revealed uh, even i don't know i am working in same organization i evaluated myself i don't know it is all coded danya kumar is very good at uh, pulling out such information <laughs> because he, uh, he himself is associated with such work he is a volatile man okay, okay thank you sir okay welcome